Hi, my name is Sam Duncan, and I'm a product and application engineer here at Ransom and Randall. Today, we're going to be looking at the ceramic sponge theory, and more particularly, how dwell time in the slurry affects slurry biology. The gist of the ceramic sponge theory is that when a dried ceramic shell is submerged in a liquid or a slurry, it will absorb it to an extent. That absorption will affect the rheology or the flow of the slurry on that part. When a shell has a short dwell time in the slurry, it cannot absorb its full capacity while submerged. Because of this, it will continue to absorb while the slurry is being drained from the shell, effectively raising the viscosity of the slurry on the part at that time. Over the course of multiple coats, this will result in a thicker shell. When utilizing a longer dwell time in the slurry, the shell is able to absorb most, if not all, of its full capacity. Because the shell cannot absorb more liquid, this allows for the slurry on the surface to drain thinner and more consistently than on a shell with a short dwell time, and in turn results in a thinner shell. Essentially, a longer dwell time in the slurry acts similarly to a pre-wet in many cases, and because of this, a foundry may be able to experiment with a longer dwell time in order to eliminate that extra step from their process. We explore the ceramic sponge theory as well as other process variables such as viscosity and draining technique in our technical paper titled, How Process Variables Impact Ceramic Shell Properties and Performance. If you'd like a copy of this paper or have any other questions about the ceramic sponge theory, please send us an email at the email listed below and we'll be happy to help. Thank you.